Unit 15, Social Issues. We're going to do a really quick recap here. Um, in Unit 11, we looked at some of the so social issues, such as obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, and heart disease, which access to fresh, nutritious food could help solve. Uh, we also saw that many urban areas do not have access to fresh food, but are instead inundated with fast food and convenience stores, primarily selling high-fat, high-carbohydrate processed foods. Also, we saw, especially in the Jamie Oliver video, that once again, education, combined with the availability of quality food, can help overcome these issues and reverse a trend towards declining health. In this unit, we'll take a little closer look at the value and potential of urban agriculture to help address these issues. I'm not going to repeat each slide from the Unit 11 presentation here, and if you'd like a more thorough review, um, you could just view the Unit 11 presentation uh, again. But we will quickly list the health issues that we discussed, obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, heart disease, and poor overall nutrition. In addition to the main culprits that we think of, uh, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, um, there are additional issues related to hunger. In children, constant hunger and undernutrition can impair physical growth, cognitive function, and brain development. The longer a child is subjected to hunger, the more likely the effects are to be permanent. Making sure children have proper nutrition is important and affects all areas of society, not just the children who go hungry. There are reasons for that. When children are raised with hunger and malnutrition, by age three, their brain volumes can be up to 40% less than children with adequate nutrition. The synapses of the brain do not form to the same degree in malnourished children, affecting their ability to learn. As adults, the earning potential of these malnourished children is reduced by more than 50%. This creates a continuous cycle of poverty and malnutrition. So where do these social issues exist? Well, the problems are pervasive and they affect all socioeconomic groups in the country and really, in fact, in the world. But they are most prevalent and hit hardest in the poorest areas. Now, surprisingly, in the United States, areas most affected by lack of fresh food exist not only in urban surroundings, but rural environments as well. Many poor rural areas lack full-line grocery stores selling fresh produce. So how can urban agriculture help? The models created by urban agriculture can be transplanted to some degree to rural environments and especially to schools. Community gardens can work in rural areas provided the population density is sufficient to support them. And it is exactly these types of areas, small towns away from urban centers where the rural issues related to lack of nutritious food are greatest. Urban areas with very high population densities can be just as affected, becoming food deserts. In some urban residential areas, there are no sources of fresh produce within two and sometimes more miles of areas of high population. These areas are almost, uni almost uniformly fall into the lower socioeconomic groups. So when I talk about, in the first bullet point here, the models created by urban agriculture, I'm talking about models such as community gardens, uh, community supported agriculture, 
uh, in share the risk type of operations, share the risks, share the rewards. Um, the uh, idea of being able to cut out the middleman, to know where your food comes from, uh, to be in touch with food production and the educational possibilities, which we'll talk about right here. Urban agriculture, as we've seen, is rife with the potential for educational opportunities. We can provide education about proper nutrition, choosing nutritious foods, food preparation, growing food and methods of food production, the environment and its relationship to food production, the effect of hunger and malnutrition, entrepreneurship, the effects of exercise and activity, and many more life lessons. Finally, we'll just take a quick look and review some of these bullet points regarding the importance of urban agriculture. As we've seen throughout this course, urban agriculture has the potential to supply much more than just food. It can also supply jobs. It can supply education. It can give entrepreneurship potential, improved academic and life performance, environmental benefits, a closer relationship to both food and food producers, more food security for urban areas that are currently quite food insecure, and many more things as peripheral benefits of agriculture in the midst of consumers. I think we can all think of some examples of that. There are life lessons to be learned about self-sufficiency, working hard, being able to provide something for yourself and also for others that goes along with things like entrepreneurship, um, the improved academic and life performance. Here we're talking about, as we mentioned before, properly nourished children, children with adequate nutrition, being able to have increased learning ability, increased earning ability as adults, those who don't have that learning ability and earning ability may go on to be an issue for society where those who have that opportunity with proper nutrition can go on to become a benefit to society. So over the course of this course, we've seen some of the innovations in food production. We've seen some of the issues that face urban agriculture, and we've seen some ways to meet those challenges and to create or help create thriving urban agricultural opportunities and operations. So that concludes this final presentation and this course, leaving you only to take the final exam. Good luck.